Hey guys, here I am with the new ESM uh, Raiden. It's a um, it's a new model out from uh, ESM. Um, it's got an 81 inch wingspan. Uh, I have looked it up, and it looks like the real one had about a 35 foot wingspan. So that kind of equals out to a fifth scale airplane. We're going. Um, it's got a huge cockpit area. We're going to try to uh, work a cockpit into that. I'm going to work around a fifth scale pilot. So. Um, Maybe some maybe somebody will supply a good fifth scale. I know six scale is easy to find, but um, <clears throat> I'm gonna work around a, a fifth scale policy if we can't get a, a good size cockpit in there. Anyway, um, I got it all out. The plane looks really not really nice. The uh, the the graphics on it looks good. Got great panel lines. Got plenty of size uh, cal for a, a big a big motor up there. I've already seen one online fly on a G62 and it just uh, lands like a dream. Anyway. Um, I'm going to get ready to get started on this. Uh, like always, I will uh, walk you through step by step. So um, I'm going to go figure out what we're going to do our cutting first. Um, I will show you that we do have a pretty, let's see if you can see, a pretty open area here. Um, the dash, there's a little bit of room in front of that. And uh, the only thing we may have to cut the very top of this former out right here to allow the cockpit to come down in there. That's the only cutting on the on the um, framework I can see. Um, let's see here. You can see that uh, the very top of this will have to come out. The rest can probably be left. Anyway, I'm gonna get in there and get that. Uh, uh, figure out where I'm gonna cut. We'll start making the first cuts and, and see where we move along from there. Okay guys, here we are and I'm, I'm back. I've got the um, area cut out. What I did was, um, <clears throat> you can see like I normally do, I've got the, the this is a three inch tape. It's like the uh, trim tape. Anyway, um, this, this is the quarter inch wide. And what I've done is I've laid a quarter inch coming from the outside edge inward all the way down across here on both sides. Um, you can always, we can always cut off more later, but I think a quarter inch is a good good width. I was going a little bit wider, but um, I think a quarter inch will work out really well for us. As far as the dash, I came up here and we cut it out to where it's 90 degrees straight down, okay? We don't want any lip that turns out this way. I also did that to the back here. It comes up and goes straight down. We cut that away to where it is straight down and there's no lip because it kind of rolls forward on both of these. So that's all removed. Okay, I did remove the cross member that came across here. Uh, uh, we'll make a thing in the cockpit that allow this side to um, stay um, up or stay uh, uh, in place. So we don't have to cut that away. Um, what I'm going to tell you when you cut your canopy, I, I, I had to cut this. So I had to cut the canopy so I could see um, what pilot we can use and, and how it fits on there, and also how the cockpit fits. Now I'm going to tell you when you cut these out, they're really brittle. And like I've told you in the past, you need to run this under hot water before you start cutting. Um, I, I turn my water as hot as it'll go. And before I cut anything, oops, before I cut anything, I, um, I let, I'll like one small area, I'll run that under hot water for at least 20 seconds or longer to get it softened up before I cut. Also, if you can look on the inside and cut from the inside, you can see the lines much better than on the painted outside. Um, but uh, just take your time and um, in the corners, let's see, I'll set this on here. It fits right in place. I use two different type scissors. I, I've got two different types of banded scissors. One's a straight and one's a curved. The curves really help in the curved sections. Um, when you're cutting, make sure you're cutting in the middle of the scissors. Never cut and, and squeeze it all the way off because it cracks right there at the end when you pinch all the way through. Okay, it, it makes a, it, it kind of cracks that area there. So stay in the middle of your cut. Okay, uh, so anyway, I'll just tell you that so you don't run through the headache of having to replace the canopy. And I've done that on several because I've cut them and break them. But anyway, um, I have. I think we're going to be able to miss all the um, leave the push rods or the the cable rods they have in there. Um, this is a fifth scale pilot. It's not a Japanese. It's an American. But anyway, I've set him in here just to get a look at what 
we're looking at as far as a, a fifth scale pilot is just about perfect. I will sit him down just a tad lower, but that's about perfect for this airplane. Um, the cockpit on the real one was really wide. They had plenty of room in it. So we're gonna have plenty of room to work in this one. All right, well, I wanted to show you that real quick, um, how we cut it out, uh, show you what kind of pilot we'll be working with to get in here. And um, once I get a little bit more done, I'll uh, come back and show you a little bit more. Okay guys, here we are back at the Raiden. I've got the, uh, the basic cockpit all complete. I'm going to show you how to install, get it prepared uh, for to install and then paint before you do your final install. Anyway, um, when you get your uh, cockpit, um, it's going to be just like all my others. Um, it's going to be, um, you're going to have one solid sheet of the floor and the two sides. Okay. Um, most of it will be cut out, rough cut, and then you have to bring it down and cut it all out till about an eighth inch all the way around. Okay, um, <clears throat> what we're gonna do is show you how to cut the sides. Um, the sides is up here along the top rail where it would fit along the top rail of the uh, fuselage. What you're gonna do is once you get that rough or cut down to less than an eighth inch all the way around, is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna lay it on a flat surface, face down, so the front edge the face of it is down on a flat table. And what you wanna do is take a scrap piece of quarter inch um, balsa or quarter inch uh, plywood as this is and lay it down on the table also and then run a line, trace a line across the top of it. And we're gonna mark both sides that way. Once you get the sides marked, you will come in here and from this back, from this where this line is on this back corner, you will come in three eighths of an inch from this, where the line touches, three eighths of an inch, and you'll make a mark. From that same corner, you're gonna come down five and five eighths inches, five and five eighths, and make a mark. And then come over three sixteenths inch more and make another mark. I've right, got a mark here, three eighths, five and five eighths, and then six, three sixteenths on over from there. All right, now that's where we're gonna make our cuts. All right, I'm gonna flip it over and show you where I did make the cuts. All right. You can see back here, I cut from down and across, cut out that 3 8 inch. I notched the whole thing out, okay? Then I came in here and I notched out where my other mark was. I just, I just two, made two cuts here and just pulled up and it broke, okay? Then we're coming back here to this back corner and starting at the corner where this was cut out, you're gonna cut across that just above this corner here. You'll leave that corner but we're relieving this, and that allows it to contour with the plane, okay? And we're gonna do that back, and we're gonna do that here on the front too, okay? But um, I forgot to say, but you need to make sure you cut your quarter inch line the very first all the way across, and then cut these two pieces out. All right, once we have it all cut out, now this was an earlier one, and the, the, the final product has a pedestal right here, and I'm gonna get ready to install, um, the final one has a pedestal at the rear that the seat sets on, okay? So um, before you get ready to install it, you wanna go ahead and you wanna take and crimp. I've got this, this wide pliers here. You'll crimp, crimp it all the way across so it folds up easily, all right? Also, before you install it, now this one doesn't have it, I'm gonna go back, back and put it later, is you need to find some lightweight 330 second balsa is probably plenty, or lightweight eighth inch balsa sheet, eighth inch by four inches or three inches wide. And what we're gonna do, first of all, is you can put front, back, or front, middle, and back, um, and they don't have to be three inches. I just, I glued these on here just to make it rigid so I could test fit it. Anyway, you do need to put these on the bottom because this is eight inches across, too much for the plastic to support, okay? And especially if you're gonna put a pilot in here. All right, you need to go do that across the bottom, all right? And then we'll come up the sides. You could, you could actually make these probably three quarters or an inch wide, put one at the, on each end and maybe one in the middle just to make them a little bit more rigid, okay? And so that allows us to, um, to be a little bit uh, stiffer as it goes in. But once you have that done to install it, all you gotta do is uh, pinch this on two sides at the top and come in from the bottom 
Let's see if you can see here. Come in from the bottom, and it just locks right in place. All right, um, you can see that the cockpit just it, it just falls right in place. Okay. Now, now everything we're doing, we're just trial fitting to make sure everything fits up. All right. Something else we have to prepare so it so it can be fitted is um, you have a uh, control panel that goes on the. Um, left side of the cockpit it will actually sit on top of this rail and on the outside of this rail here and to make a square corner all right but uh, you'll get a piece that looks like this all right from the front corner here you can take a, a, a square and run it out to an inch and a half and make a mark all the way across at one and a half inches all right and then from this corner down all the way to that corner, it's going to be uh, an inch and seven sixteenths. But we're just going to cut across here. Um, you can see that the uh, triangular piece comes up, and I just drew a line so you could see it. And I'm cutting along this. The finished piece will look like this. You'll have a uh, squared off edge to keep it rigid up there. And what you do is once it's totally installed, there'll be enough plastic for you to come in here and install a piece to make this uh, where, where it doesn't bend at all. So, uh, but anyway, we'll take that and when it's through, it will be installed on the sides. Like I said, that front piece will be glued along that uh, the ridge that stands up and then the, the top will be glued along here. Okay, so that gets us the square that I was talking about. All right, now this still fits up and into place, no problem. Um, on top of this here, um, I made a full resin piece that has like the flap wheel and some different controls. I'll show you how to paint those here in a little while. But those fit directly on top of that panel. Okay. Um, also, I pulled it off. Um, you can see where I pulled it out. Um, is the throttle controls. It had a large throttle control that was independent of this. And it had actually three large throttle levers on it. And that will be glued right here in this corner right there okay that's one resin piece now on the other side these resin pieces are rather large and um, i wanted to do them so that be a little bit more better detail now to keep the weight down the other ones have um light a big lightning hole in it so so it's a little bit lighter than what i have here because this is solid but um that fits right in here we'll paint those and i'll show you how to put those in and then there's uh, another one here. You can see how this has a lightning hole in it. Um, but anyway, if these are two, I'll explain what to do in a minute. But um, this one actually, yeah, this one actually set up vertically right there on the thing, on the um, right underneath the, the ridge here. So it, it glues in right there. Now the real one had had a small bracket that came from this corner down. It was at a sharp angle. It wasn't like a 45, but it's a real sharp angle. And you can put that on with a piece of scrap balsa or a piece of scrap um, uh, light ply. And but it will it will be rigid enough to glue right to the side if that's what you want to do. <coughs> but um, there will be some gauges supplied that you can put a gauge a, a gauge in there, and also um, one in here. Okay. Um, uh, I will show you a little while later how the rudder pedals and everything will go in here. Um, the next thing we need to do is prepare the dash to be installed. Um, when you get the dash, it will it will be in just like this. You can see it's got the flashing all the way around it. Now there's two ways to prepare this. There, uh, there's a lighter and one that's a little bit heavier, but also a little bit easier. Um, what you have to do is take this, and before you cut it out, is on the back you can see where the dials each dial is those go back in there about a sixteenth of an inch so in between those dials on the back and you see this big open space you need to put some sixteenth inch balsa and what that does it just levels it across the back and across the dials okay so we want to get that all um, all those empty spaces filled then you can lay this down on a piece of um, three thirty seconds balsa and trace it 
and then cut it out and we're going to glue this piece in to make this nice and rigid okay now this is the way i've always done my dashes and so then you would cut out your um, dial your gauges and put in each one of these now something i'm trying a little bit different on this one is you get the same piece what we're doing is turn it up and we're filling this with some 20 minute um, or 30 minute just finishing resin to what you want a finishing resin and you pour it to where you get this good and level to where the backs of the gauges are just barely visible i mean there may be just a slight film of resin over the top of them okay that makes this nice and rigid and then now we can come in here and cut this off and sand this flat across the back <clears throat> the one thing that that's advantage here is that um, instead of cutting out all those dials you can come in here and what i did is i took a, a drill and i drilled through it in the center of one of these and i took an exacto knife a nice sharp one and just easily started cutting this out until it was at 90 degrees down okay so it just opened the hole all the way up i didn't cut into the plastic to, to where i was touching the resin i just touched just cut the more or less the bottom out of it and made sure it was just straight 90 degrees anyway then you can take your dials and cut them out a little large and stick them on from the back side now to me that looks pretty good you can you can do it that way or you can do it the old way and cut them out and install them into the into the front itself so you can do either way this is a little easier it is just a little bit heavier than using the balsa okay but um, you know there, you got a trade off there it's just according to how what what you want how easy you want it to be now you need to leave this setting up at least um overnight to make sure it's nice and hard okay so anyway at the end you want it to look like this all right you're also going to get a um uh this dash had a side piece it does have an angle on it this is glued in at an angle now you need to make sure that this is installed first and then this piece will fit in there to wherever it needs to be um, so it sits on the floor and then up on the side um, i'll show you one thing i did uh, i was trying to figure out because you can do it one or two ways um, the dash um, on the real plane stood off of this okay and what i have done originally i thought about putting this dash right up along here and you can do that if you want but um, to be a little bit a little bit more scale i've taken it and i took a piece of um, this is a half inch balsa this lightweight balsa and i glued it to that vertical former inside here it, it, it's right at the um right where the um gas tank would be the back of it and this is i, I believe it's two and a quarter inches from the back here out this way and what this does now this is just temporary i put two pins here to hold it this allows you to um that's a little bit that's a little bit too low but you can see how much of a standoff i have here and that's the way the real one did it just stood off there into off of the thing it had different standoffs to be back this way a little bit so that'll make it easy if you want to make a standoff and what you also need is once you glue this in you need to add a support across here so it does not um, wiggle sideways sideways i just haven't done that yet so we have this prepared um, pretty much to, to paint um, the next thing i want to do i'll show you the headrest when you get the headrest it'll be on a, a piece of uh, plastic all the way around and you want to leave it in that temporarily and what i've done and it's the the um the original one will be a half inch thick it'll be a half inch tall here so what you want to do is take your piece of balsa once again and this is eighth inch eighth inch thick and i cut it to three eight three eighths inches wide okay then i started at the bottom and i glued this piece in then i came up and glued a piece from that corner up to the corner here did this one and then i boxed in the top this makes it nice and rigid and still keeps it lightweight i still want to add a piece from here over and here over just to give me a little bit more strength because what we're going to end up doing is that there's going to be some plastic supplied in the kit and you will glue this flat down on a piece of plastic and then cut this away and that will make a nice rigid box that in turn will be glued right here on the back now something else you ought to consider is we've removed this um, uh, 
fiberglass in here. On the inside is installed maybe a um, half inch wide by a quarter inch thick piece of balsa all the way across or maybe in two pieces because there is a seam there. And then when you glue this down, uh, maybe you run, drill a hole and run a toothpick up through there to give you a, to tie these two in together a little bit better. But this sits inside and um, the head, this will not touch the top of the canopy when it's seated. Uh, another part to the headrest, that's the armored part, was a black headrest, um, a padded part. Um, if you look at some of the documentation, it was black in color. Um, what you need to do is take this, you'll line this with like 16th inch balsa, and then sand it flush across the back, and this is glued directly to the center front of this. It took up almost the whole piece here. Um, for a headrest. So then that all that will be glued into place. Um, your chair will be glued directly onto the center of that pedestal there. And like I said, I will show you how I'm gonna do the, um, the foot pedals for, um, for the rudder here in, in just a few minutes. But anyway, that kind of goes over how everything kind of fits together. All right. Um, also, there will be a box back here. This was a radio compartment. That I will include a box here, and it will have some uh, knobs and dials that you can put on it and kind of dress that up a little bit. It was one single box. It went right back here. Um, so I will get, um, I'm, I'm going to probably go ahead and get this thing painted. I'll go over the, uh, the parts I've put in there as far as the rudder pedals and everything and try to get this thing dressed up a little bit before I show you the final thing. Okay guys, here we are with the um, thing. I've got the cockpit all painted. I'm gonna show you how, um, where everything goes in the final install of it. Um, uh, let's just start off with just a quick look at it. Here, here's the um, main cockpit all painted. Um, uh, according to what documentation you look at, some of these were all the green and with different dials, but I like the very, some of them were black, green interior with the black, uh, boxes and everything so i kind of like that it gives you a little bit more of a, a contrast and color but anyway uh just your your large one goes here um just right right in front of this one here at, at this post or this uh framing this one goes and it glues right to the underneath edge and you got another small box that goes down here um your throttle control goes right here on the, it's just the first one back it glues right in there um before you paint it i'd go ahead and drill my holes for my um there's pins and there's also pieces of aluminum that'll be supplied that you can uh slide over the pin before you glue it in place um <clears throat> this control uh panel right here goes on top and um i just painted it green and then painted all the individual things black now i don't have them put in yet but there there are two handles that go in right here and there's also two knobs i have some eighth inch um dowels and your two knobs with um with with uh well with well, two pieces of dial with and you put two knobs on top of it uh, i think they were like kind of like o2 canisters or something um there's also another piece of plastic that you'll have to it's got a small hole in you have to drill it out to 9 30 seconds actually i go just a tad smaller or, or just take a small dremel tool and just until this is a nice snug fit you have your uh, joystick um, this is from the documentation this is kind of how it was shaped it looked like just a tube that had a, a, a gun control on top of it. Um, your uh, rudder pedals, um, this piece here, as you could see earlier, was molded in. You have a quarter inch dowel that goes from all the way across, and you have two textured um, rudder pedals that go on top, and those go there. Okay, um, this uh, you can see here on the back, the headrest. I went ahead and put me two uh, pieces of uh, uh, cross members here, so solid in the center. And then I just put glue all the way around that 3 8 inch um, balsa and glued it straight down on a piece of, um, of the, uh, the plastic. And then I just trimmed it and sanded it until it was all clean and it made a nice headrest. And then I mounted this piece here on a piece of 16th inch balsa and sanded it flush on the back, painted it, and then glued it in place. Okay, like I said before, you may want to um, come hold it in place, drill a couple holes through the bot through the bottom, and up into this. That'll give you your hole guides. Pull this off and 
Oh, let's see here. Let me pull it up a little bit. Anyway, drill your hole, hold this in place, drill your holes up through there. And um, that'll give you a, a guide to where to put this. Then mount you that, uh, maybe the half by a uh, quarter piece of balsa across here. And then drill those holes down and put two toothpicks in there uh, once you glue it. But it'll, get, it'll lock these two pieces together and they'll stay a lot better. Okay. Um, also, um, I'm going to show you up here on the dash. Two different pieces of documentation. I use a lot of uh, plastic models, especially on these rarer planes you can't see. You don't get a good dash view of. Um, a show, one of them showed it was uh, a standoff from the dash. Well, I went back and looked, and um, uh, one of them showed it was, and one of them showed it didn't. So anyway, um, you can mount this directly to this piece here, the dash itself. I like it th uh, this way a little bit more, because I think proportionally they made this uh, cockpit a little bit long. Um, the rudder pedals actually go up under here at this position. So I uh, included a um, gun sight. Uh, you just have to paint it up and actually glue right to the end. I would drill from the back side before I did anything else so I could um, put a, a toothpick between the two to tie this together. Okay. Um, I went ahead and you can see I have masked the whole thing off and painted an interior green. This is just an interior green supplied by uh, or that... that um, model masters paints um, if you looked at the actual green some of the others it shows a, a little bit lighter green but this is what i had on hand this is what i used okay um once you get all this put in oh i did want to tell you when you're painting the the resin pieces you need to wash them you need to wash them uh, with a a nice um uh, soapy water to get the, any of the um mold release off um i shot the green with the model masters and then i came back with an acrylic just acrylic it, it, it painted on really easily um that you like the hobby paints you buy at um at uh, hobby lobby or, or, or michael's or something and the black turned out really well painted on really nicely um uh, but anyway like i said before this installs very easily just coming up from the bottom whoops now it's a little bit more rigid on this side because we have this box over here we're going to come up from the bottom Being that dash is in place, it's a little bit tighter. Okay, you can see that locks just right in place. No problem, no problems whatsoever. And it, you eventually you'll glue it in there. And once you get glued in, I would run a, a stringer underneath the bottom of this all the way across to give you a little bit of support. Uh, so vibration or something don't get to it in the long run another thing y'all think consider is when you mount these plastic pieces when you're putting the um, the supports the um, balsa supports on the back side of this plastic is think about putting it right on the where it'll be on the back side of like these pla these um, molded pieces here so you can run drill through that balsa and 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 stick a toothpick or something in there and glue it in place and that'll lock that in from vibration getting to it in the long run um like i said this piece goes here um the seat's pretty self-explanatory uh it, it's glued in there um you do have this piece here that comes off at an angle on the dash itself but you just, once you get the dash glued in, you just have to bring this in. It's hard to see. But you'll figure it out. You just have to bring it in and glue it to the side of the dash there. Because it came at it came back at an angle. Alright. Um, the headrest just comes back in here. And then the canopy will fit right on it clear. You need to make sure you cut this short enough, the, the lens here, that the canopy will go on. I had it too long the first time. But this goes just right in place. The whole thing fits in there without any problems whatsoever. It's a very easy cockpit. It took me longer to paint it than it did to, to put it together. Um, uh, 
I will, like I said, there will be a box here in the back I will, I will include because there was a radio box right back here and include some dials and stuff that you can dress it up. Uh, one thing I did want to show you is these resin pieces. The large ones, the one on this, these, these sides here, I do have lightning holes in it. Now, if you're really concerned about the heaviness of the plane, you may want to come in here and take a little bit more off the side. I made these pretty big, so the, the holes here, so that they would be pretty a lot lighter than if they were solid. I've done this one, and you can see that the hole is, you could take off a little bit more. But I'll leave that up to you. Um, it probably don't add that much weight to the whole thing, but I know some people are really con uh, conscious of the weight of these airplanes. Anyway, um, it makes a good addition to the airplane. It, it fits around pretty much a fifth scale pilot. Um, it uh, dresses it up. It makes it look really nice. It gives a little bit of definition to that big area you have um, that you would just put a pilot bust on. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the kit. Um, it'll be available from VQ Warbirds. Um, I'll, um, if you have any questions, you can feel free to contact me through my website, tiesplanes.com. And there's always a phone number or email address there. I hope you enjoy the kit.